generations. And now, the power of two restores the one. We got a bidet! Hey everybody and welcome back for another video. In today's video we are talking about a movie that was much anticipated for the two of us and so uh, I'm very excited to go ahead and share with you our thoughts on the new movie Civil War. We're going to go ahead and talk about non-spoiler things, give the movie a rating, and then talk about the what happened in the movie in more detail. So like I said it was a movie that's it was arguably one of my, or probably the most anticipated movie for me of the summer. Well, summer coming up, spring slash summer. Um, because it was an A24 film, and we, Sarah and I both know, and you probably know from us talking about it, is that they make you think. You know, they're usually, they're, they're not pretty cookie cutter type movies. They are what's going to happen next, what's going to blow my mind, stuff like that. And so, arguably so, very excited for this film. I would say the film is, it's, to a point, it's hard to put into words, in, in my opinion, because they pull no punches when it comes to, like, showing you the, the horrors of war. Um, it is very graphic as far as the, the content there. Uh, I highly, highly recommend if you want to see this movie, see it in IMAX like we did. Why? Because some of those scenes feel way more real, in my opinion, as far as um, the sounds that you are hearing. And honestly, the opening shot, they are flexing their muscles on that IMAX sound system. I don't know if you remember this, Sarah, but it's basically like, uh, it's not a spoiler, basically just the the like from the radios that you make, you know, if you're pushing the radio button and it's, it's doing it in like random spots of the IMAX theater. So like you can hear the noise traveling in the theater. So we know that, you know, things are going to be um, really nice with the sound system. And there's definitely some parts where it made people really jump because of um, some of the noises from the gunshots and stuff. Um, but I would say this movie was kind of slow in the beginning. I will say that. But I think overall, this film, I thought was very good. I was interested the whole time. And it's because I'm not going to go into spoilers here, but, you know, bear I with me. I think it's a fair statement to say kind of the general idea of the movie, which for me going into it, I thought that it was going to be kind of like a drama slash comedy about the civil war um in the trailer like one of the jokes that they make is uh like they go into a store that's clearly not affected by the war and it just seems normal and they talk about like you know there's a civil war going outside right now right and so that to me that really stuck with me and i thought that was going to be kind of the tone for the movie is like uh kind of more of like a drama piece or maybe kind of more comedic and that's not really what we get from this um, the bulk of the movie is following reporters about the war. So they're they're re not necessarily reporting on the war, but they're tracking what's going on. Um, they're all. I, I feel like that's a general enough statement to to be able to say without spoiling things. Right. But kind of what we're doing with this film is we're following this group as they're you know they have a destination in mind. They have a goal that they're trying to achieve. But basically what this film is, is we're following this group and we're kind of seeing like the horrors of what a civil war would look like in the United States. So, you know, there's tons of different things that we end up seeing with different scenarios. 
that some of them are like super uneasy and it felt really real. And so I, I think that's what the movie does really well is, you know, the films that tried to avoid the landmines, kind of a pun, I suppose, the landmines of people's feelings, those wouldn't paint the picture quite well. This is like, hey, if you want to see what this, the horrors of the war is going to be, this is it, and you're going to get it. So um, there was a lot of things in this movie that were, you know, in my opinion, shocking. Uh, the the sounds sounded super real as far as, because, you know, like when you play video games, some those noises don't always, you know, they're not really replicated super well with guns all the time, but it, by the end of the film, it is pretty crazy, needless to say. I feel like with the gunshots and, like, helicopter noises and stuff, those were times where it made sense to have it be really loud and it made it feel mm -hmm. a lot more immersive. Yes. But then there were other times where there was, uh, like, background music uh, or certain sound effects or just things that... Uh, filler for a movie because it'd be weird for it to be silent right but then there were times it was, like, it was transaction it was... like transitional periods like when they're driving yes. through the country and stuff you know we hear the the different music that their, their choices are and yeah i would say those were kind of loud but yeah it might not even necessarily be things that the characters are hearing but more so just background music for us as the audience and I feel like there were so many times where that was cranked way too loud and it just didn't even make sense um, for the for it to be quite that loud. Yeah, I can agree with that. I wouldn't say that takes away from the film, though. Oh, I straight up found it annoying. <laughs> I, I just kind of because, like I said, we're traveling with the group. You know, there's going to be times where nothing's happening and there's going to be times where it's like, oh my god, are we going to be killed kind of a thing. So I feel like that's what would, like if we were in that situation, it'd be the same thing. It'd be driving down the highway with the radio cranked at times. Um, But yeah, I would say I really enjoyed the film. Uh, the, I wouldn't say it's a perfect film by any means. There were some slow parts, like I said. Uh, there was times where I felt like it, got bogged down a little bit specifically the part where sarah was mentioning where they uh they go to that town and they're like you know there's a civil war going on right and i felt like that part kind of slowed the movie down a little bit but there's enough in this film where it's like wow I, it almost makes me feel like this is a warning film like there's so many things in politics, like if you pay close attention to it, that, you know, it at times it seems like the country is going to crap. And basically this is saying, hey, you know, if we don't come together, this might happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I feel like the action times or when there was something going on or something happening to our characters, those were all executed really well. Uh, they were shocking. And it's kind of one of those situations like they went there, you know, we say that time and time again with A24 that they're not afraid to to go there, you know, to those crazy shots um, and images and whatnot. Um, so they I do, feel like those. I was going to say they do kind of start out kind of mild, but by the end of the film, they they definitely go there. Yeah, I, I feel like those were the part that really made the movie um, just because it was it was keeping me interested. But then the parts in between were so slow and I know you need some of it and I get that it's a road trip. And so, you know, not there's not going to be something happening every minute. But I don't necessarily want to be a part of all the boring parts like that's the point of the movie. Um, well, it's I, interesting. I there has to be a fine balance. I get that because you need time for character development. You need time for things to breathe. You need time for the characters to interact with one another. It can't just be action all the time or it's not going to, it's going to feel rushed. Right. So I get that there needs to be a balance, but there was enough slow parts that the movie as a whole to me, mm, it, I, I left feeling almost kind of bored with some of it. 
And it was it was it was sad to say because I was really looking forward to the movie. What I find kind of interesting is like how you, you said, you know, there's the boring parts where we're just driving through. But if you kind of think about it, if you were in that situation, I feel like those are the moments where you're like, thank God I have these moments because those are the times that you're not scared for your life. So I don't know. I have to just think it's an interesting dynamic. But yeah. so we'll roll roll into ratings. And then after that, we'll start talking about some things where we're revealing, you know, what's going on in the movie. Um, coming out of the theater, you know, I was really on a high from this movie just because I was like, wow, like I was surprised, even though there were some times that were um, bogged down or took a little longer than I wanted to. Um, I felt really good about the movie, but at the same time, I recognize there's some some small issues here. So I'm just going to say it's a strong 9 out of 10 for me. Um, I don't think it's quite a 10 out of 10. I would say it's like the, the movie that I... The only other movie that I gave a great rating for <laughs> was another A24 film this year. And that was, you know, Love Lies Bleeding. I would argue that, you know, they're both very different films, but I would say that one I was more consistently engaged with the film and not I don't think I was ever bored during that film. So I would say a very strong nine here. Definitely another good one, in my opinion, from A24. Yeah, I I would still say it was a really good movie Um, and I would definitely say it's above average. But is it as fantastic as what I'd set myself up for? No, not quite. Um, I, I'm at a 7 out of 10. I, I feel like walking out of the theater, I was at a 6 because I was kind of a little disappointed, more so because of my expectations of what kind of movie it was, and then it wasn't that kind of movie. But looking back and trying to keep that out of my rating, you know, so looking back at the movie that we got, um, I feel like for the most part, it was executed really well. There was a lot of, uh, you know, the journalists, so they take pictures of things and whatnot. And there was a lot of different filming uh, scenes that you might not see in a typical movie where they're trying to show you like the photos that they took or, you know, what what life is like behind the lens and how you get these shots and whatnot. And so I thought that stuff was really interesting Bless um, those people that do that because absolutely not would I be out there. I'm yeah. so not a spoiler. I'm I'm assuming this is how it is in the real world. I was kind of surprised to see that, you know, if you have the word press, you know, on your uniform and everything, you got the helmet. It it seemed like a an understood thing that you don't shoot those people. Like you might get accidentally shot. But it seemed like people tried to avoid them in a way. Mm, I don't know that I'd quite go that far, but whatever side they were on when they were trying to get the, the certain camera shots, those people attempted to try to protect them as long as they stayed out of their way. And that I thought was more surprising. I also kind of wonder if it annoys military when they're around because then they're just an extra person they have to worry about but i i i would assume so just because you wouldn't want them to to get in the way of completing your mission right but anyway yeah so seven out of ten for me i thought it was a good film is it one of the best i don't know that i could quite go there but i would say it's above average nice all right well we're going to transition into spoilers here so uh, I think as far as like the expectations thing, one of the things that I was expecting a bit more, but we got definitely a lot less of was uh, Nick Offerman's character, the president. I was kind of yeah behind Sarah there. I was kind of hoping to see quite a bit more from him um, just because I, I think he's a really great actor. And uh, going along those lines, you know, Sarah has watched all of Parks and Rec. I've seen some of it. But like when we were thinking we would like watching that show, we would love to see this guy be like the president. And boom, this was the platform for him. And he got to be president. 
but then we really didn't see much of him actually be the president. So I thought a that really was good. A... It's a really good point because we really only see him in the beginning for maybe a minute or two, and then at the very end for maybe a minute or two, like nothing in between. Yeah. So that's actually a good transition to talk about how it started. Um, so the beginning of the movie is we see uh, the president essentially rehearsing some of his lines before he delivers it to the nation. And essentially, the United States has been split up. I think it was into four or five different sections. And it's basically the government against um, the, the, the rebels, basically. There are two states that are seceding. Two of them? Yes. That's why their flag is, uh, instead of 50 stars, it's two stars. Oh, I don't that remember makes sense. two. I thought I a saw one. a map where there was like four sections. Maybe I was wrong about that. That might have just been how they were voting or something. I don't know what that was for exactly. But the there, there were two states that had seceded from the nation. Um, and the president was basically saying, like, if you you know want to come back then we'll just have a truce and you can come back or whatever but um the the western forces they refer to them as wf at times i want to say it was california and texas but i'm not a hundred percent sure on that i don't quite remember what the two states were gotcha um so yeah we we got the civil war going on and then we're we get to meet some of our characters, of course. We get to meet Kirsten Dunst's character. Uh, her name is Lee. Uh, we get to meet her counterpart. I think it's just a, a co-worker. I don't think there was a romantic relationship there between the two of them. But we Yeah, I think meet, they were just friends. We get to meet Joel, who is the second person behind me. Um... Jesse is a young photographer and she is actually like a big fan of Lee's and we we see these two meet each other. I thought that so I'm going to reiterate what I said in the non-spoiler section where we're kind of using these characters as like the platform or the um, the vehicle to see the lens of what would be happening in the Civil War. And I thought this was a really good scene. So we're meeting our characters. We're meeting Lee. She's doing her thing. And then um, Jesse shows up and sees her a little starstruck. And basically Lee is telling her, hey, you know, you should get out of here. And she tries to give her like her um, her little vest that. I think is supposed to identify her as a photographer or the press, which we see a lot throughout the film, just so that, you know, Jesse wouldn't be bothered because she's a much younger girl. Novice probably doesn't know how to protect herself in these situations very well. And what's great about this scene is, you know, we see some scuffling back and forth between the police and the citizens and I thought it was kind of weak here at first. They didn't really go at it. It was just kind of like pushing and shoving. <laughs> Excuse me. But Lee sees somebody running with the flag. And the flag is the one with the two stars that Sarah was mentioning. And that must be something that everybody is aware of. Because she sees the flag. And she goes, like, get down kind of a thing. And she, you know, pushes Jesse behind a car. And they know those people that run with the flags are suicide bombers. And so uh, the bomb goes off, kills a bunch of people, injures others. And just like the characters, us as the audience cannot hear a thing because that's what would happen to your hearing. And so we're seeing what's happening with the characters. You know, they're looking around, they're seeing all the carnage that happened from it. And so do we as the audience. And so, that's like our little introduction, like I said, not only to the characters, but kind of how the rest of this movie is going to play out. And honestly, I think that's its strong point is that, you know, we get to see, you know, if this were to happen, what what are these people going to be? What, what are people going to react with? How are they going to handle it? How are they going to band together and defend it, defend themselves? Um, so we'll get to more of that in a minute. But 
that's our meeting of those two characters. It's pretty big because that's how Jesse gets involved because the other two are basically already, you know, together as far as co-workers. Um, we eventually meet Sammy. That is, it's kind of blurred in my picture, but um, down the line here, um, I think he, the actor, his name is Steven Henderson. I'm pretty sure he's been in some other A24 films. I think he was in, I think he was in Dream Scenario. I can't remember, but I'm recognizing him from other things. He, it was not Dream Scenario. It was, um, Bo is Afraid. Ah, okay. Yep. That's right. So he is talking with the, our reporters and basically the reporters what they want to do is they want to go to Washington DC and they want to interview the president because he's not taking any interviews nobody's been able to interview him he's basically hiding out in the White House and hoping for the best and so they're trying to get from where they're at all the way to the White House and he which uh, is funny because his speeches that were basically inches from victory and it's going to be the best victory ever yeah uh sammy's telling them you know you're crazy you know, you know the closer you get there the more likely that you're going to get killed kind of a thing because it's a war zone um and so long story short they convince each other to go on this trip and uh jesse swindles her way into things by talking to Joel and he just thinks it's kind of cool that she wants to be a part of things. Honestly, it gave like a Jurassic Park vibe to this situation because there's the scene in Jurassic Park where the kid is obsessed with me uh, being with Alan Grant. Here we have Jesse who really wants to hang out with Lee and learn the ropes from her. And so I kind of got that vibe from it. Um, uh, but yeah, they set off towards Washington, D.C. I think it was like 800 something miles for them to get there. And as they're going through this trip is where we're we as an as the audience are starting to see, you know, what are these different things that would happen in this scenario? How would people react? Um, I might mix up a couple of things as far as the order, but we're going to do our best here. Uh, I th think the first one's the gas station. I couldn't remember if it was the gas station or if it was the the first press thing where she gets the picture of the guy um, helping the dude that got shot. Anyways, um, we'll just go with the gas station first and then we'll we'll move on to that one. So we go to the gas station. They need fuel, of course, because they're driving across the country. And it's interesting because they pull up and they're they're a little leery at first. And. There's three guys sitting out front with guns and one of them comes up and basically wants to know what their business is. And it's kind of interesting because Lee is saying, you know, we have this money where all we want is uh, to fill up our tank, which is half a tank. And then they want to uh, fill up their um, gasoline jugs, the two jugs that they have. And when she mentions that she has money, he basically says, like, that kind of money isn't going to get anything here. Kind of like your money is no good because it's the United States money. But she says it's Canadian money. So because the United States is in a civil war, my guess is the money has been devalued. And so, you know, getting Canadian currency must be super valuable to them because that country has their stuff together. So, you know, if they're able to get to Canada or when this all blows over, it should have more value to it. Uh, so he agrees. He says, you know, you can have your gas and stuff. Um, but this is where Jesse's character gets to, you know, be developed a bit. <laughs> That's kind of a pun, too, because she likes camera stuff. Um, we're full of it today. But... <laughs> She notices something that's kind of behind the gas station and she wants to go look at it. And one of the dudes that is sitting out front decides to go with her. He allows her to go look. Um, he's kind of gave off creeper vibes to me. Like I had kind of wondered if he was going to do something to her, but he doesn't. He just follows her around back and uh, eventually Lee does too, just to make sure that, you know, nothing happens to Jesse. 
And what Jesse saw was that there was these two bodies that were hanging uh, in a, I wouldn't really call it a shed, but it was just a little oh, it's a car wash. A car wash? Oh, okay. So two bodies were hanging, but they were alive. And basically... Yeah, I think they were like hanging by their wrists. Yeah, and the reason why is because they were trying to steal from these other guys. One of them said, I have kids, and he was just trying to feed his family. But, you know, there, there's really no law enforcement in all these places because the law enforcement is trying to stop the riots and fighting the battle. So it's kind of like, you know, everybody is for themselves. And so they're trying to take the justice in their own hands here. And so what Jesse is kind of learning here is that, you know, people are cruel and what's what was really interesting to me with this scene is that i i believe that dude's name was dave based on the imdb stuff i think it was dave that was watching them he was basically like these guys here that one there i went to high school with that guy and it's just like you know it doesn't even matter at times if you know each other like I can't imagine someone that you had a connection with, at least to some degree, that you wouldn't try to help each other, like seeing that the dude was desperate to feed his family kind of a thing. But uh, they were up there. They were beaten. They were definitely beaten because they were all bloodied. And he was asking Jesse something along the lines of, you know, should I kill them? Should I let them live for a little bit or like put them out front and let them die? Uh, in a couple days, you know, what should I do? And everything happens off camera for this one. Uh, we really don't get to see what he does. But from the next scene, tr transition is that um, Jesse is kind of having a mental breakdown because the guy killed them. And so she, you know, witnessed what happened. Uh, let's see. So that was kind of our like first little adventure with them. There's there's some scenes that are like thrown in in between where we're seeing the the journalists, you know, with different soldiers and taking pictures. That was the one I was talking about a second ago. Um, that's kind of where Jesse is starting to get her first real experience with taking pictures. Um, but let's see what happens. Do you remember what was the next major scene? Was it the one where they rolled up and it was like the Winter Wonderland? I think so. So they come up, they're they're driving through, and it looks like, you know, a little carnival probably was there at some point. Almost looks like a putt putt course too. Just had that vibe where like there's some music playing that said, you know, well, welcome to whatever, stuff like that. And there's a house off in the distance. There's a dead body on the ground with blood coming out of its head. And they're cautious. They're wondering, you know, can we drive through here? Can we not? And Joel basically says, I'm going to just try it. And when he does, uh, a, a round gets shot in their direction. And so they leave the vehicle and they get they go for cover. And they notice that there's two other people uh, hiding out with their own sniper and they're trying to basically, you know, wait for that dude in the house to um, mess up and then they would pick him off. But they couldn't go anywhere either because the guy in the house is a really good marksman. And so they had to wait around until uh, they got a good shot. This is kind of a, a little comedic relief section because... Joel is trying to talk to these people about, you know, what's going on here. And the dude um, that is the lookout, so to speak, he's trying to tell Joel, but he's not really telling him. He's kind of being vague about things. And he's just like, are you stupid? Kind of uh, like, are you not hearing what I'm saying? And it, it's a weird little comedic sec section. But I honestly thought this was one of the lower points of you know what we could be experiencing of what's going on i don't know about you sarah i thought it was all right um 
I thought it was really interesting how they were soldiers. Like I thought they were part of the actual military, like the, the yeah. United States military. But then the one had like tie dye hair and his fingernails were painted like tie dye and stuff. So I don't know what side they were on because there's no way that would have flown in the military. But um, yeah, I this was one of the times where I start to wonder how invincible is their van because their van mm. goes through a lot in this film and this shooting sequence where they get shot up, the windshield gets cracked is just one of many where the van either gets shot up or like they ran over a body at one point they're going to run through um, their van gets like run off the roads. So they kind of go through some forest and you think that their car is done for like in any other movie, in any other situation that would have been the end of the car. Like you're walking now. But yeah. somehow they're able to just back out of it fine and keep going on about their business. Their vehicle never gets uh, put out of commission, which I thought was really strange. Yeah, which we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, and not trying to jump too far ahead, but just this was the beginning of their van finally taking some damage, but then it never takes enough damage. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure the next thing that we go to is that the small little town that seems like everything is perfectly fine you know when we're talking about the trailer where he was like you know do you realize there's a civil war going on um and so it it it's interesting because it I, again this is one of those things where i think it's a really clever way that they filmed it so we go into the shop everything feels normal even when they're driving through town it's like whoa what the heck you like how is there how is there no carnage anywhere and i thought it was kind of neat that the first thing they showed to let you know that everything was okay was somebody was watering their lawn you wouldn't oh, take the time to do that unless you were like living your normal life yeah that's true um but when we go in that store you know they're shopping uh jesse is trying to make lee be a little bit more normal where she's like why don't you try on this dress and then she's trying to get her a picture of her smiling because she doesn't smile very much. Um, same thing with Joel. He's trying on a hat and, you know, trying to be cool with things. But eventually, Jesse slightly offends him about the hat and he goes outside and he's talking to Sammy. And this was what I thought was really cool because it's like this town is normal. Nothing's going on. And Sammy's like, or no, it wasn't it wasn't um Joel, it was Lee. Lee that went outside. And he's like, look around. Just try not to look like you're looking for them, kind of a thing. And so like nonchalantly she, look at the rooftops. Yeah. And so when she's looking around, the camera pans up, and now we see that there is a presence there. There's people on top of the roofs to make sure that nothing's gonna be going on, like snipers. And so although it feels like they're ignoring the war. They aren't completely ignoring it. So I, I think thought it's that more was... just that they're not picking sides and whoever's there is whoever's there. Yeah, and they're trying to defend their their turf. Um, so yeah, we get that little scene with that town, and then we're on our way to a, you know, heading towards our destination still. And there's a car that's following them and they're picking up speed and uh, Lee is a little cautious of it at first. She's like, you know, what should I do? And Sammy tells her to just slow down, let them pass. And they come up right next to them and come to find out it's actually some buddies of Joel's. And so it's it's nobody that's trying to kill them. It's nobody trying to run them off the road. I will say, though, Joel's buddies are kind of stupid <laughs> as far as the things that they want to do. And his buddy wants to switch over to their car. So he like hops, they like line the cars up. He hops out of his window and goes into Joel's van. And then Jesse. While they're going like 50 miles an hour. Right. And then Jesse is like, hold my beer basically. And then hops into the other vehicle and they speed away. And this is the scene where Sarah was talking about how, you know, the, the car seems indestructible because at one point lee swerves 
the car goes off the side of the road. I thought she was going to hit a tree and then, you know, things were going to be messed up, but she doesn't. She stops the car, puts it in reverse, and then tries to go and find uh, the other two because even though, and I felt this way, even though they knew the other guy, times have changed. So I had kind of wondered, like, you know, are, are they being set up even though that they're old friends? And so they go off looking for the vehicle. And they eventually come across the vehicle and the doors are open and nobody's there. Um, do you want to cover this part? I feel like I've been talking a lot. Sure. Uh, so they kind of scope the place out and they see that um, Jesse and the driver of the car that she got into are on their knees, basically pleading for their lives from these sh soldiers. And this is where we wind up getting the scene from the trailer where the guy's in the rosy glasses and he's asking, you know, what kind, you're American, what kind of American? And from the trailer, I thought they just meant like, which side are you on? But no, he was talking about like, are you actually from here? Are you from Central America? Like, and the one guy says he's from Hong Kong because he's just being honest and he shoots him point blank like, nope, not American. We see them dumping bodies into this massive body pit and it's just, it's a very real, very scary, intense situation. Uh, the Both of the guys from the other car end up getting shot and are killed right then and there. Um, I don't know but if what you picked up on it. I'm My dad and I picked up on it. Um, all the people, all the bodies that they were dumping, they appeared to be foreigners. And so I kind of wonder if that's why he picked them off, um, the Joel's friends, because they weren't from America. Uh, because what I had wondered when this scene was first starting is that I had wondered if the guy was going to be like, you know, what part of America? Like, what state are you from? Like, are you on, which side are you on? Not, That's what I thought he was going to be getting at, yeah. not, are you just not from America kind of a thing. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so Sammy is not approaching with the rest of the group to try to save Jesse. And we don't necessarily know why at first. We know that they kind of pick on him in terms of like, Well, are you, are you just not going to help her because you want to stay back because you're an old man who can't run? This is the second time in the movie where they make that joke. And to be quite honest, I still thought the joke landed. I still thought it was funny um, because they're, they're, you know, it's like buddies picking on each other. Uh, he winds up taking the van and because it's indestructible, uses it to run over or hit the soldiers that are like about to kill his friends. One thing that I didn't quite understand, though, is that Jesse got flung into the body pit. But how did she get flung from the car, yet she's perfectly fine? Like, she's not even, like, hurt at all. See, I didn't quite understand that either. My yeah, this is the what helps me sleep at night situation. Um, my guess is she was trying to jump out of the way. Oh, it could be. And she happened to fall into the pit. Yeah. But yeah, so um, this is uh, the part of the trailer where he's saying, get in the car, like, get in the car now. Yep. So they all get in the car, uh, but one of the soldiers is able to get up fast enough that he starts shooting at them as they're racing their car away. And they get a little ways down the road, and that's when we find out that Sammy was shot. So he switches to sit in the back seat um, and eventually bleeds out uh, to death. And so it's it's a very sad moment for the group, um, you know, because they've now lost one from their team. Uh, this is when they finally ar ar arrive. Goodness, they finally arrive to I think it's Charlottesville, Mm -hmm. which is uh, it, it was one of the stops on their way to D.C. This was where Sammy wanted to go. He was going to leave the, the group at this point. It was close enough to the action without actually being in the heart of D.C. Um, but this is where there's a WF camp. So they wind up taking his body there
they find out from some other reporters that the WF group is like on the verge of DC's doorstep and that they've essentially arrived too late. They've, they've kind of missed it or at least so they think which is very frustrating uh, because oh, yeah. I mean, their livelihood, they wanted to be there. They wanted to be there on the scene at the first line. And Joel is having like a huge mental breakdown because not only did a couple of his old buddies get killed, but Sammy too. And so like, everybody around him are dropping like flies and you know now that they believe that they're out of luck for this mission essentially um it's really bothering him that it, it seems like it was for nothing yeah i i feel like you enjoyed the ending a lot more than i did <laughs> did you want to cover that yeah i can cover it so the ending is is the night scene from the trailer where we see the chopper going through the smoke and everything. And that's because we're a fine, we're finally at DC and they're still trying to, you know, meet up with the president and uh, interview him and all this stuff. And so they're going through the streets. It's a, it's a war zone. And so we're again, we're really seeing what would this look like on our homeland through the eyes of these journalists. And so we see quite a few things happen. Um, at one point, I had wondered if uh, Lee had been shot because she was like hunched over and just staring at the ground. And Joel was saying to Jesse, like, Hey, you better get over here so that you know, I thought something was wrong with um Lee. But I think she was just having like a mental breakdown, like an existential crisis, like I've I've finally made it here, now what? Yeah. And also, um she said early on in the film when she was just um talking, I think it was with Sammy, she had said something along the lines of you know, I've been doing this so long. I'm, you know, I'm surprised that I've made it out of all these different scenarios, which we get to see like a montage of all the different things that she uh, had to deal with as well. Um, so that could be part of that little mental breakdown that she's having is, you know, this, this is real. This is intense. There is a handful of times where they could have been shot, but they were saved by the soldiers. Um, but also what's going on here, too, is that Jesse is being a bit rambunctious. Uh, she's being very naive and, you know, trying to get the best shots for um, their story, which is great that she's ambitious, but she's really not thinking about what consequences could happen. So we got that going on, too. So eventually we get on the doorstep of the White House, essentially. And what I mean by that is the gates that you'd have to pass through to get to the front lawn. And so they have a little scuffle there. Eventually they plow through and we can see that they are, um, I think they're CIA agents and they are shooting back at the crowd while people are, they're trying to get the officials into the limos. And they're like, oh my God, there he is. They're evacuating the White House. And so they send out three limos. Uh, the first one kind of paves the way and crashes into something. The second one paves another way and crashes into something. And then the third one that gets away, it seems like, you know, that's the one they like, it almost seems like the first two were trying to, provide cover for the third one so when the third one goes through it seems like that's gonna be the one to you know make it to the end but then they get hit by a tank and they just open fire on these cars like even if the president was in one of those cars they didn't even care they would just kill him don't even want to work for him because there's even some well, of the that was their main goal was to find and kill the president right even the officials, when they open the door, they're like, please don't fire. We surrender kind of a thing. And they just took him out. And while this is happening, Lee is kind of putting it together that he's not here. He's still inside somewhere. And so they head towards the White House, they being the journalists. 
and they go inside and eventually the soldiers follow them in and we get in my opinion between what happened outside of the white house and what's going on inside the white house i thought this was shot very very well we are definitely living the life of these journalists because you know there's there's just absolute carnage going around with the gun the shooting going on and then we see you know our journalists hopping in taking pictures hopping back out we're seeing those pictures that they're taking to kind of like break up the commotion so to speak and uh they're making their way deeper and deeper into the the white house one of the things that i thought was surprising so they get into the I don't know what part of the White House this is called, but it's essentially the conference area where the like spokesperson reports to the reporters and answers like questions. A press room. There you go, press room. And so she's got her hands in the air and she's like, the president is willing to hear you out and you know come to an agreement and surrender. And they talk a little bit about a surrender here, but eventually the soldiers just had enough of it. They just like screw it and they just blast her well they wanted him to come out to talk in person because they wanted to kill him and she said well we want to know that you're gonna take good care of him or whatever like you can just negotiate with me and they're like oh we'll take good care of him and yeah. secretly thinking because we're just gonna kill him and like, they also wanted to like go off in a different part of the land and like on neutral ground to talk things over um, but again, they had enough of it, so they shot her. And then um, they're going a little further deeper, and there's like a long hallway that goes to the Oval Office. And they're, again, exchanging fire with the, um, I think it's CIA, maybe. It's not the FBI, because they talk about in the movie that they disbanded the FBI. So it's got to be the CIA, um, Secret Service. And they're firing back and forth. And this is where the luck runs out. Jesse wants that awesome shot. Not to mention she's already got plenty of good ones, but she jumps out in the middle and she's about ready to take her picture and Lee notices that uh, they're about to fire on her. And so she jumps out, she pushes um, Jesse to the ground and then in sequence of pictures, which I thought this was a good attention to detail, earlier on in the film, Jesse had asked Lee, if I were to be killed, would you take my picture? And I think she says something like, what do you think? In a way, like doesn't really answer it, but it's open to interpretation. Which when Sammy died, Lee had taken his picture. That's right. But then she wound up deleting it, I think because she was kind of coming to more of her humanity like this is my friend right yeah that's a good uh thing to point out i didn't really make that connection um but yeah so as you know jesse falls to the ground and she has her camera up and then in sequence with the pictures we see lee being killed which i thought was kind of interesting because i feel like with her being shot there would have been more of a like burst of blood or something that we would have saw from being hit by the bullet. But we just kind of see her fall to the ground um, again through pictures. Um, Jesse is an absolute shock from what happened. And I think to a point, Joel is too, because Joel sees uh, Lee on the ground and just kind of walks past her. You know, the dude has lost some of his old friends. He's lost Sammy. Now he's lost Lee. And I think in his, because Sarah and I kind of talked about this on the way home, I think his mental state is just down that hallway will make all of this worth what it was supposed to be. And if I go and get it before these guys run in there and kill him, it'll be all worth it. And so... He does kind of grab Jesse by the shoulder, like backpack strap. I don't know if it's because it's like a what have you done or like a come on, we got to get the shot or or what, because at this point 
they've cut the audio of the of the film because to kind of really emphasize that everybody's in shock um mm-hmm. because when you're in shock you, you can't really make sense of what's going on around you you might not be hearing things or just blocking out the sound so the sound's blocked out at this point um but yeah yeah so the soldiers they rush into the oval office and um Joel and uh Jesse arrive into the office and Joel says hey Hold on. And so before the soldiers open fire, he's like, I need a quote. And the president says, like, please don't let them kill me or something like I think that's what he said, like word for word. And he goes, perfect. That'll do. Yeah, that's what he said. That'll do. And so the quote from the president is don't let them kill me. Uh, And then they open fire and. Uh, Jesse takes a picture of the group. It's kind of like, uh, I think I want to say they did something similar with like Saddam Hussein and uh, a lot of other Middle Eastern leaders. When uh, when they've taken out a leader, they take a picture around them. I've seen this in other types of things, too. But that's like the final shot of the film is that them taking out the president and then being around and happy that they accomplished their mission. And that's the end of the film. As the credits are rolling, you can see the picture is extremely white and the details kind of start to show up little by little as if it's a photo being developed. So I thought that was kind of neat too. There's just a lot of little details like that throughout the movie that I think really elevated this from being an average film. Yeah, and which is what I would expect from... A24. You know, like I said, they're not cookie cutter. They don't care about your feelings. They're going to give you what they feel is going to make a great movie. And that's why I think this was a really, really good movie. Um, Like I said, I would, if you're going to see it, I highly recommend seeing it in IMAX if you can. Um, But otherwise, it's it's just a, it's a good one to go see in general too. Uh, A solid film from A24. Uh, Anything else you want to mention about the movie? I feel like we touched on everything that was important. Yeah, there's a couple of other like character development type things where they're just talking and whatnot. Um, But ultimately, that's kind of what we go through as the audience. Like I said, kind of living through what would be a civil war in the United States nowadays um, through these journalists. So... Uh, If you enjoy this type of video where we talk about the latest movies, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We try to do at least two of these movie discussions a month, sometimes more. So check back here with us by turning on those notifications. Drop us a like if you liked the video and drop us a comment. Letting us know if you saw the movie, what are your thoughts. Um, And if you look forward to seeing the movie, again, I think it's a good one to go and see. It's a good one. And then, as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.